right, in episode seven from this chapter, we're going to study two more organelles, mitochondria and chloroplasts. Now, these two guys are unique because they're really involved in energy transformations, but they're also kind of similar to each other in the fact that they have their own DNA, and it actually is DNA that looks very prokaryotic, so it's in a single circular nucleoid. They also go through a process of cell division by themselves, and it's very similar to what a bacterium would be. So it's believed that mitochondria and chloroplasts evolved from bacteria that were engulfed by a eukaryotic cell. And we have a later chapter when we talk about evolution and that kind of stuff, and we're going to go over what that theory is in more detail then. But just want to remember that mitochondria and chloroplasts, they're believed to evolve from bacteria that were brought inside and allowed to live inside a eukaryotic cell. So let's learn about the mitochondria. The mitochondria are known as the powerhouse of the cell because they go through a chemical process in which glucose is turned into ATP. And this chemical process is called cellular respiration. And whoop, my respiration. Okay, I believe I'm spelling that right, but who the heck knows? Sometimes I misspell stuff. We're going to learn about this in Chapter 9, so that's coming up in the future. Now, let's review the structure of ATP. Remember, it looks like a nucleotide where you have adenine and you have ribose. Put an A there. And then sticking off the side, you're going to have some phosphates. One, two, three. That's why it's called ATP. Now, the energy is stored in these bonds right here. In fact, they're called high-energy phosphate bonds. So the body needs a lot of this stuff every day, so you're constantly using it, remaking it, using it, remaking it, using it, remaking it. And that recycling center where you keep making it, that occurs in the mitochondria. So let's look over here into the structure of the mitochondria. It's got two membranes, and these membranes have really, really unique and difficult names to remember. So I really want you to pay attention in here. The membrane that's on the outside, that's called the outer membrane. And the one that's on the inside, hmm, that's called the inner membrane. That's a tough one. Make sure you practice what those are. Outside, outer. Inside, enter. Hmm. All right, now this inner membrane is folded up to increase the surface area, and those folds are called the Christi. Now the Christi are going to be the site of a really important set of proteins, and these proteins make up what's called the electron transport chain. Now, this information that I'm giving you right now, I'm really preparing you for Chapter 9 because we're going to talk about the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is where most of the ATP is made. And the electron transport chain is where we're going to use oxygen. So the only reason that you do this is because you're going to use this oxygen on the inside folds of these mitochondria. Now, you see this blue liquid out here? It kind of looks like a lake. This is called the Matrix, and it has nothing to do with the Keanu Reeves movie. It simply has to do with a process called the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is another part of cellular respiration, and the products from the Krebs cycle are going to be used by the ETC to make some more ATP. All right, so make sure you remember that it's the powerhouse of the cell because you're going to make ATP. They do have their own DNA. And they do undergo a cell division just like prokaryotes. But another really interesting thing about mitochondria is you inherit them from your mother. Because when we have fertilization, we've got a, a sperm cell that joins with an egg cell to produce the first cell or the fertilized egg that's going to become you. The sperm cell is really tiny. It's basically a nucleus on a stick. And that stick can swim. Any kind of organelles for that new fertilized egg is going to come from the egg cell. So ERs. Golgi's, centrioles, mitochondria, those are all going to come from the egg cell, which are inherited from the mother. So scientists can use mitochondrial DNA to trace the inheritance in the family through the mother. And that's used for all kinds, sometimes used for crime, sometimes it's used for uh, uh, demographic studies, uh, anthropology. So mitochondrial DNA is real important for expanding our knowledge on how things were inherited. All right, on to chloroplast. 
Chloroplasts are going to be found in uh, plants, and chloroplasts get their name from their color. They're green. So chloro refers to a molecule called chlorophyll. Whoops. That's an R right there. And chlorophyll is a molecule that's going to be used to capture the energy and light because a chloroplast is the site of a process called photosynthesis. Now photosynthesis is what we're going to learn in chapter 8, so we're going to save off all the details for that chapter, but we're going to prime your brain for some of the stuff we're going to learn in chapter 8. Now photosynthesis is a process in which light energy is captured, that energy is used to take CO2 and water, bang them together to make glucose, if you remember glucose is C6H12O6, and all that's going to occur inside the chloroplast. Now they're just like mitochondria. They've got their own DNA, and they got more than one membrane. And in fact, in a chloroplast, we've got three membranes. We've got an outer and an inner, but now we have a new one called a thylakoid. Thylakoid membranes form these little green poker chips. And a stack of poker chips is called a granum. So just remember, Granny likes to stack her thylakoids or stack her um, green poker chips. Now, the thylakoids is the place where the light dependent reactions occur. And once again, this is just stuff to get your brain ready for chapter eight. And we have a liquid that's outside the thylakoids. This is called the stroma. And the stroma is the place where the Calvin cycle occurs. And the Calvin cycle is where the sugars are actually made. So Calvin cycle and the light dependent reaction these are two things that we're going to learn about when we get to chapter 8. So I'm just kind of getting your brain uh, ready ahead of time. Uh, I just want to remember, make sure you study these two. And until the next time, catch you on the flip side.